I was so suspicious by the Monday um, that I just felt I had a duty really to pass those suspicions on. Um, I spoke to my news desk back in London and they said that they thought that was the right thing to do. Now, let's discuss why we were a little suspicious of him, because mm. your suspicions were aroused first of all, and you shared those suspicions with me. I then talked to him, investigated mm. it, tried to find out whether his story was true. Yeah. And I have to say, I came back and said his, his story checks out. Yeah. What, uh, first of all, made you suspicious about the fact that he was spending so much time around the scene? Um, it, it was just very remi reminiscent of the Soa murders. That was my first instinct. Was there was a local guy, he was hanging around the scene an awful lot. He was asking us questions about what was going on in the investigation, maybe trying to find out what we knew. Um, and he just seemed to be giving an air that he was authoritative, um, that he was working in an official capacity for the police. Um, and I was just very suspicious about that, that they would take on board a man who was just a local guy. They have many people, I'm sure, who speak Portuguese and English. Why would they ask him to, you know, go into the apartment, speak to the family and have that sort of contact with them? Now, how cooperative was Robert with you when you were talking to him? Because. Uh, first of all, he, he wouldn't do any interviews with me. When I would ask him to do interviews on camera, mm. he declined. Had you approached him to do a proper interview and asked his identity and things like that? Well, he was very vague when I tried to ask about his background. Um, and he would chat to me quite openly, but he wouldn't give me his surname. He wouldn't tell me really where he was from, where he lived over here. He wouldn't give me a telephone number for him. Um, and when I asked him about what he did for a living, he was very vague. He said he worked for real estate. Um, and I just, I just had a really uneasy feeling about him from, from day one. You reported him to who and what was the response? Um, my first um, call was to Leicestershire Police back in the UK um, and they took all my details. A detective constable called me back and took a full statement and um, she suggested that I also speak to somebody out here. Um, we didn't really have a police contact last week so I called the British Embassy and they said to just speak to a, a policeman on the scene. So I walked up to a GNR policeman and said, you know, I've got suspicions about a gentleman who's been near the scene and I'd just like to pass those on. Um, and one of my main suspicions was that he said he was translating witness statements. And I asked them if that could be true and they said no, that was highly unlikely.